Hello and congratulations, you have found yourself at Theatre Beard, the home of all things theatre studies here on YouTube, particularly if you are studying GCSE or BTEC, either performing arts, drama or theatre studies. If you're none of those things and you've just got a bit of an interest, you are more than welcome also. Today is another Wordy Wednesday where we unpack some words that you might come across if you are studying or working in the theatre. There is a playlist of all the other Wordy Wednesdays, so do go and check those out too. Today's is going to be all about terms that you might come across when talking about lighting. And I'm going to preface this video by saying that I am not an expert when it comes to technical theatre in any way, shape or form. But these are some terms that I've used when working with technical theatre people. And as a director, I've been very fortunate to work with some fantastic lighting designers in the past because the way that I tend to work with them is that they're the ones that are the experts in lighting design, how to light a show and how best to do it. I wouldn't expect a lighting designer to direct a show and I'm sure they wouldn't be very comfortable directing. Whereas I like to work as a director, I know what I'm doing as a director, I don't really have any expertise when it comes to lighting a show. So I leave that to the professionals, but I do know some terminology that might come in handy if you are having to light a show yourself or if you are analysing a performance. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of this video, please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up because every like helps. So the first lighting term we're going to talk about is that of a wash. And a wash is lighting that covers the whole stage. It's usually quite a soft light and it covers it all evenly. Now this wash could be made up of different colours, it could all be one colour, or it could have a feeling. So very often I'll talk to lighting designers and say, oh, I'd quite like a warm wash, or I'd like a cool wash. And they will fill it with warm colours, such as oranges and yellows, or cool colours, like blues and whites. Depending on the size of theatre that you're in and what kind of lights they have, they may have LED lights. And LEDs are really easy to change the colour of and they just change colour at the flick of a switch or the turn of a dial. If the lights are lamps, then the way that the colours change on those is by fitting a different coloured gel. And a gel is a sheet that is placed in front of the lamp that the light shines through and it cancels out any of the other colours. So for example, if you put a red gel in, that light will only be showing red. The reason they were called gels is because originally they were made out of gelatin. However, this had a tendency to melt. So now they're made out of different materials instead. So any lamp can be changed to a different color simply by placing a different colored gel in front of it. Next up, we're going to talk about specials. And a special is kind of the opposite of a wash. A wash is more general light that covers the whole stage. And a special is one particular light that's designed to pick something out from the stage. A special is a fixed light, so it doesn't follow performers around the stage. We'll come on to that a little bit later on. And they're usually used either completely alone or if they're combined with a wash, the special light will be used at a higher level so it appears a little bit brighter than the rest of the lights on the stage. So as a director, I might use a special to pick out a particular piece of furniture or for example, say a telephone rang, we might have a special just shining on that telephone or if a character popped into a dream state or had a sudden thought, we might hit them with a special and kill the wash. Specials can also be used to create particular lighting effects. So for example, if I wanted to have some sunshine shining in through a window, there would be a special that is pointed through that window and that creates these beams of light that are coming through. But they'd be used with a wash um, and it's just the special that's at a higher level because if it was only that special, the rest of the stage would be in darkness and there wouldn't be any other light. Next up, we're going to talk about gobos. And a gobo is similar to a gel in that it changes how the light looks from the lamp. However, where a gel is made out of a very thin plastic, a gobo is made out of very thin metal or sometimes glass. And these have designs etched onto them or if it's glass, it's sometimes painted with a different color as well. And these cast different shadows and shapes all across the stage. These patterns that they create can just be generic patterns just to break up the lighting a bit so it doesn't look so flat, just one flat colour. 
or it can be a specific shape. So for example, you can have a gobo to create a lighting effect of a window, or it could be a gobo to create foliage, so it looks like light coming through trees, or you could have a gobo to look like a cityscape. There's a whole host of different gobos. Next up, we're going to talk about side lighting. And side lighting is a convention of dance theatre performances. I have seen them used in other shows before, but very often it's a dance piece that utilises side lighting more than any other. And as you might suspect by the name, they are lit from the side. And these are stands of light that stand at the wings at the sides of the stage and shine light horizontally across the stage. One of the lamps in the first lighting position on that kind of tower of lighting is known as a shin or a shin buster. And this is because they are at shin level. However, they're focused, which means that they aim the lights kind of at the central position. And the reason they're hung in this position and aimed slightly upwards is so that they're lighting the dancer and not lighting the floor of the theatre. And this gives the illusion that the dancer is almost floating in the performance space as if by magic. After the shins, the next most important position is those called heads or head highs. And as you would probably guess, those are at the top of the tower and they're hung at head height. Again, they're focused down a little bit to the kind of central level. And it does mean that the lights do catch the floor slightly, but they're not directly lighting the floor. The reason these two lighting positions are so important, shins and heads, is because it's entirely possible to fully light a dance theatre piece just with those two positions. And it means that if a dance company are touring to different venues with different lighting facilities, some might have fully kitted out rigs, some of them might have limited options, dance companies very often will take their own lighting equipment with them. And it means they need to take less kit because they only need shins and heads. And that's it. However, if a theatre is fully kitted out, they might have much more lighting available to them. And at that point, the side lighting becomes a bit more complicated, where we'd start off at the bottom with low shins, then high shins, then mids, which lights the middle section, low heads and high heads. So each of these towers either side have five lights on each. And there might be several of those upstage, downstage and centre stage. Next up, we have follow spots, which is what I was alluding to earlier on when I was talking about specials. So where a special lights a fixed point on the stage and it can't move, a follow spot is a light usually on a stand that is operated by a lighting technician and they will light a performer with that spot and it's able to move, it's able to follow them through the performance space. So that follow spot operator has got a very important job because they'll be lighting that performer throughout the whole performance space. Sometimes again, it's against a wash, but the follow spot might be up at a higher level. Other times, the rest of the stage might be in complete darkness, but that follow spot is the only thing that is lighting the performer on stage. So that lighting operator is very, very important. The next kind of light we're going to talk about is a birdie. And a birdie is a miniature lantern. And because they're so small, they can be hidden in the set. So if you wanted to light the set using birdies, you might have up lighters to light um, the scenery. Then you can hide them behind things or very often they're put against the downstage edge of the stage and lighting up into the action. Birdies can provide a surprisingly bright pool of light, but just be aware that you are going to be lit from a low angle. And so therefore you're gonna get shadows cast up on the face, which can be used to great effect if you wanted someone to look a bit scary. Other terms to think about while we're talking about lighting is the lighting rig. Um, so that is all of the lighting equipment that is hanging usually above the space. If it's a Proscini March Theatre, they might have a fly tower and all of the lighting would be found up in that rig with all the different lighting bars and all the lanterns and cans hanging from those bars. All of those lights are then connected to a lighting desk and that is how they are controlled through different sliders. And that desk can usually be found in the lighting box, which is sometimes known as the lighting booth or the control booth or the control room. Again, those final terms of lighting booth, lighting room, control room, depend on the venue that you're in because it just depends what those facilities are in that particular theatre space. However, if there's lights, there will always be a lighting desk. 
And finally, I'm also going to talk about limelight. And the reason we're going to talk about it is because you might have heard the phrase of stepping into the limelight. And it is a theatrical term, but we don't use limelight anymore. Limelight was used in theatres in the Victorian period before we really had electrical lighting and it used chemistry to be able to light those performances. This bright illuminated effect was created by directing an oxyhydrogen flame at calcium oxide. Now calcium oxide has got a very high melting point which meant that it could be heated to very high temperatures before it would start to melt and when it was heated it would give off this glow and it was a kind of incandescent glow that was tinged green, hence why we get the name limelight, because it would give off this green light. And even though the use of limelight has long since been replaced by electric lighting, we have still kept the term. So somebody is said to be in the limelight if everybody has got their attention on them. And so that concludes today's Wordy Wednesday all about lighting. If you haven't done so already, do subscribe to the channel. Saying nice things is always free, so feel free to pop something in the comments. And I'll see you next time.